Or welcome, welcome to Homekeepers. How are you today, my friend? Hey, grab yourself a cup of tea and join us. Uh, one of our favorite guests returned. You know, the Lord has blessed us with the most wonderful guests. I've mentioned this, but you've mentioned it a lot too. But the regulars, boy, they are top notch, aren't they? Like Dr. Clark and uh, Deborah Ray comes on regularly and uh, Carol Kent and uh, with real specific subjects that we can kind of just delve into. And it's always a joy when these regulars come back because they're part of the family. And uh, we feel you're part of our family, so they are part of your family. And today, Dr. David Clark is back. He's a psychologist and mainly uh, deals with marriage problems and does a lot of premarital counseling. Uh, today, we're going to talk uh, uh, just a little bit about some new areas he's into, and that's a podcast, and that information will be on the screen. And also, he's on with Janet Parshall uh, once, uh, once a week or once a month. And uh, that's a very well-known radio program. And so the Lord is using him and uh, broadening his ministry. But it's, it's an important one. And I've said on this show many times that just, you know, one counseling session, one hour with someone can change your life. Someone who really uh, is qualified. And that's what I believe Dr. Clark is. And going to join Stephanie for teriyaki glazed chicken. I don't need to say anything else. I know you love it and we do too. We'll fix it for you and see if you would like it and you can get a free recipe if you would like to have it. Before I join her though, I've been offering you this book by Beth Moore. This is a little condensation of a, of a larger book she wrote on the promise of security. And I just think we're, I've lived a long time, you know, I've got, I'm gonna have my ninth great grandchild uh, later this year. And so I've lived a long time and I've never seen such insecurity in people around the world. There are, there are some violent things happening and, and very coarse talk and a lot of ang uh, you know, arguing on television. It, it just promotes insecurity, but God has called us to peace. And Beth uses the uh, phrase, you know, goodbye insecurity. And this is a condensation of that book and I uh, offer it to you for the gift of any amount to the program, and we will get it right out to you. You can order it with your credit card, 1-800-229-0059, or box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, and uh, we'll get it right out to you. I just want to reiterate that reading one phrase, one scripture, I mean, can change, turn your life around. And so I hope you'll take advantage of it, and... Uh, that way you're supporting the program as well. And I'm here with Stephanie, and yes. she's already got the chicken going. Yeah, because we don't have all day. No, <laughs> no, we don't. This is a great one of those. Sorry, I have a holes in my mouth. <clears throat> this is one of those great recipes. If you double it and you freeze half of it, you mm -hmm. have a meal for another night. Mm -hmm. Super simple. And who doesn't like teriyaki stuff? Well, that who doesn't like to have a meal made already? Yeah. You come so home, it's you a double take it blessing. out of the freezer, it's, and you make some rice, and mm -hmm. you're done. But you know, getting back to um, what I was talking about, you've been through stuff, I've been through stuff, all you folks have been through stuff. And when I was going through bad stuff, there was really nothing, nothing uh, that was available. Tim LaHaye was just beginning to start books mm. on marriage mm -hmm. and all, yeah. and mine was crumbling. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a preacher's wife, yeah. and, and you just quote scripture to me, I, I need, I need that reinforced. Right, uh, right. And uh, that's why this uh, little book is so important that in the midst of everything, you can feel secure. Right, mm -hmm. certainly. Has it been true in your life that just maybe one encounter, one conversation, reading one, one thing? One thing. Yeah. Especially going through the breast cancer, I made a sign that said, today is a good day to have a good day. And oh, every I day, can... I just looked at that sign. That's I was good. like, today is a good day to have a good day. That is very that good. That simple. So that yeah, is very I have good. chicken cooking. Yeah. I'm going to put some carrots, Julie. Julie. julienne, carrots, and onions in here, and we'll saute those up, and then we can talk a little bit. More. This is a good day to have a good day. Tim. Yep. That's not rocket science. Can, nope, it's really not. And not even it's not even scripture. No. It's just <laughs> it's just a, a good reminder. Just a a good word yeah. that is so important, and the Bible stresses that. Yeah. A lot. So that was um. 
carrots and onions. I have soy sauce mm -hmm. and I have brown, brown sugar. sugar. And that's going to go that's in it. in a minute. That's it, you that guys. I mean, you make a batch of this. You put half of it in the freezer. You and put the other half over rice. You could do rice one time and then you could do like egg noodles mm -hmm. or some kind of noodle mm -hmm. the next time to make it a little bit different. And I was talking to her on the uh, phone, on the intercom, just not too long ago. And we were discussing time frames and all. And uh, she makes sure that, number one, Bob DeAndre has lunch. Yes. <laughs> and we decided we're going to send him some of this. Yeah. She's I, like, is this because with the, the time we're taping today, you it's, know. We're off right, a little bit. Yeah, we're off a little we're, bit. And we're I right said, at well, his lunchtime. And we don't want to mess that up, so... I'm like, hey, so this he could would. be his lunch. So I have a bowl right back here ready. I'm going to make him He's some He's going to be thrilled. He is because this is going to be delicious. So I'm going to put soy sauce This is in. better than what we usually give him, right? And let this cook a little bit longer at home. Mm -hmm. we got to do a little speed cooking mm -hmm. here. Brown sugar. And that and is. We're just going to keep <clears> this sauteing up. I love soy sauce. Mm. It, we we kind of made you around nice here flavor. in... in Good, nutritious meals you can get together quickly. Do we? No, <laughs> no, no. We do. Some, we do some. No, we do some really bad desserts. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, but I think that's what homekeepers are looking for. I am down to simple. I want simple. I ha I spent the days where I did. You know, if I tried Scratch. to do like <laughs> all these meals with all these ingredients with all and no more. <laughs> I just want simple. I want few dishes. Well, I, I just cook make, for myself. Yeah. So, so I, I and, go and home and well, it's just down I go to home Dave and, and I. a salad. That's kind of it. It's down to Dave and I. He, but he likes. I, I want to make sure he has a good dinner because he doesn't eat all day because he works out in the heat. So How does he, he do that? Be, well, because if he eats, he'll get sick. So he doesn't eat all day. But by the time wow. he gets home, he's hungry. So I want to make sure there's a good meal. But I don't want to spend hours in the kitchen. Mm. Well, it's true. It's so so many. Uh, I would say the majority of Americans in marriages, both people are working. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not the best, but that's the way it is. It is Cost of living. Is, yes. And we got rice already cooked here. Yep, already cooked rice. I'll put a little bit over this so you can taste it, but I'm going to let the rest cook a little bit a little bit more. Let's get some of that yummy soy sauce. Well, juice. you could put a lot more in there besides carrots and onions, too. Oh, for sure. And you could do scallions instead of these kind of onions. Mm -hmm. You could do broccoli. Mm -hmm. I know broccoli's good in, in a stir fry. I mean, you could do anything. Squash. Mm -hmm. So yes, many things. I, Zucchini. That. Peas. I could mm. go on forever. <laughs> well, I would, I would mm, boy. It smells really good. I would certainly have zucchini and uh, a little broccoli. Yeah, that would be really cauliflower. Mm -hmm. You could even do, instead of doing regular rice, you could do the cauliflower rice. Mm-hmm. And then that takes out the carbs. I don't kid you. That's good. Mm -hmm. And that dressing was only two ingredients. Mm -hmm. I'm anxious for you to taste Soy that. Soy sauce and mm -hmm. brown sugar. So super simple. Wonderful. Yeah. Because usually when you get a teriyaki thing, you think there's all kinds of stuff. Well, you think there's yeah. teriyaki in it. All right. <laughs> Information's coming up for you. Get this recipe for free. And then I'm going to talk to Dr. Clark. So stay with us. You'll want to hear what he has to say. I promise you. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. It's a delight to have you back. My pleasure. We get to have you once a month. And also... Um, you are a regular on a very popular radio show now. I am. Janet Parshall mm -hmm. in the market with Janet Parshall. Been a lot of fun. She's brilliant. and uh, She's she a gets staple. Me. She's been on for... Oh, yeah. And she, it's, is it the Moody Network? or Yeah, the Moody Network of stations. So WKES, we're the local station. Yeah, she is just terrific, and she seems to like me so far. Well, we like you here, too. <laughs> And also, uh, you're getting very hip with this technical stuff. Oh, I'm cutting edge, yes. Lane, I'm telling you. He does a podcast, and I don't even know what it is. So will you ex <laughs> You can educate me while you educate the viewers. I should have my son-in-law, Phil Dugas, educate you. <laughs> <laughs> I can turn my computer on. But he knows all this stuff. Uh -huh. It's brand new. It's the I Don't Want a Divorce podcast. 
It's on iTunes, Spotify, uh, of course, on link to my website. Uh, so it's been just a lot of fun, uh, you know, 10, 12 minutes. Uh, now, do people call in? No, it's like it's all pre-recorded, and then it's it's an audio, it's just an audio, mm -hmm. you know, tape of me talking about a particular topic. And as a matter of fact, the first probably six or seven are on the topic we're discussing, Enough is Enough. Just little bite-sized chunks. People can hear my beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's been fun. Well, everybody's, I mean, a podcast is... Um, they're very popular today. Yeah. Very famous people have. I'm telling you, Phil t said everybody's got a podcast except for you. I said, you're right, mm -hmm. Phil. And mm -hmm. so we're doing it together. Nancy, his wife, our daughter, we're kind of like a team. It's been a lot of fun. Good. Yeah. Now, on one of those, can you have call-ins? No, not for the podcast. Because they're not really live? Or? No, but folks can always, uh, uh, through the website, davidclarkphd.com, which will be on the screen, you can... You can always email me directly. The email is there. There's phone advice I mm -hmm. do. So people can get me pretty easily. Yeah. So we'll leave that website up uh, because if you have uh, listened to Dr. Clark through the years that he's been on this show, um, you got a good idea of his knowledge as well as his biblical grasp, and he won't lead you astray. You were on last month, and we were talking about Enough is Enough. That's your brand-new book. Yeah. It was brand-new a month ago. Yes. And um, how to leave an abusive relationship. And I mentioned on that show, I was so surprised when I got into the book of uh, the detail. And and the way I look at it, you've got all these bullet points for women to follow. You, you don't just get up and leave. Well, you, you need right. a plan. Yeah. And it's, it's outlined in this book. Uh, but also, do you think every point is right for every woman are they there some that would be more important you know it's a little variable i mm -hmm. mean the, the main thing is yeah you need to get out even that's the woman's choice but i think god is clearly saying in the bible with abigail and nabal other places to get out give the man a chance to change but in terms of the woman and how hard it's going to be and the things that her husband's doing that are abusive yeah that can be variable mm -hmm. so i'm trying to cover all those bases because he'll try to convince you of course the abuser never thinks he's abusive the pastor may not think he's abusive. Your friends may not think, well, you're living with the guy. So when I talk to a lady, I'll know within 10 minutes, eight minutes, five minutes, if she's living with an abuser or not. And I believe her. She has no reason to lie. But women often fight it themselves. Who wants to believe that they're married to an abusive guy? Mm -hmm. Well, nobody. And so there's a lot of denial that operates. So in the book, I'm pounding away at that, convincing them, you know what? I'm sorry, he is abu an abuser and he ain't changing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you say that the plan might be several months. Could be. You kind of need a, a target date, and there's, these are things that you need to accomplish before right. you leave. Oh, yeah. It depends on the lady. Could be several months, could be several weeks, could be up to a year or more, depending on the circumstances. I have ladies that have been so dependent. They don't drive. If they drive, they have no access to money. They have no job. They have, what am I going to do? And they're... And they're, and they're timid, they're very passive, they've been so beaten down, maybe they have health issues, they have to recover their strength first uh, in a secret way and, and get a secret support system going, uh, an attorney's advice. They've got a lot of things to do in order to be strong enough to leave. Because once you leave, that could be the beginning of a reign of terror by the guy. So you've got to be ready for that. He's not going to take it well. It mm -hmm. can't be his fault. And you've insulted him beyond belief by leaving, so you've got to be strong enough for that. Mm -hmm. Well, you need some very reliable friends. Yeah, it's critical. Who will keep their mouth shut. Exactly. Who will not say a word to him. And I say in the book, you know, Arthelene, the abuser, he's not an idiot. He knows who your support team's going to be. Maybe and he'll, he makes calls and he'll try to get information out of them. And the only response is, what are you talking about? If you're on the support team. No, mm -hmm. I know nothing. Mm -hmm. You lie like a rug. Who cares? Mm -hmm. It's a Rahab lie. No mm -hmm. problem. No, I don't know what you're talking about and you just hang up. Mm -hmm. We don't want to give him anything. Mm -hmm. um, you say it takes a lot of preparation. Uh, the first point is get spiritually healthy. Yeah. How do you define that? I define that as you're, you're really walking in a close relationship with God. Now you know him through, your, through his son Jesus. I have the gospel in the book because if a lady doesn't know Jesus, she's not given, he has no strength, but it's no power. Yeah. yeah, critically important. Right in here. And if once you know Jesus, then you've got to really grow in that walk because it's going to be his strength that will get you through, that will get you out, and that will protect you. 
That involves having time with him every day, uh, Bible studies, women's ministries, uh, probably a small group at your church. If you can find a pastor on the staff of your church that gets it, that will understand what you're saying. And before even going to the pastor, do some, do some spade work around the edges to, see, to know if he's even going to be amenable to this. Don't waste your time. Uh, so, but if you have a supportive pastor who can keep a secret, that's going to be important. But you have to walk with God. Do you think, um, what, what's your opinion? Most pastors, if a lady comes in and says, I had it, I can't take it anymore, and I'm leaving, what do you think the pastor will do? 85% are going to take the, the approach of, well, you know what, I'm sorry, you're married. And this is outside of what I do, but you, you, you can't do anything about it. I would prefer you, if I'm the pastor, I'd prefer you staying in this marriage, being destroyed, and your kids destroyed, than even contemplating leaving. Because most pastors equate separation with divorce. I'm not saying that. I'm saying get out. Mm -hmm. God will take care of the rest. They may have no choice. But they, they really don't want you to do that. Mm -hmm. Plus, and this is just, I guess it's a guy thing. They don't get trained in seminary. They don't have the training and background that I do. Well, you know what? You just have to keep praying and loving, and somehow that will make the difference. It's not going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. He'll keep on abusing you until there's nothing left. And then, not so subtly, it's, well, what are you doing, Artheline, that's causing him to hit you? <laughs> that's the good one. Uh, or, or treat you badly. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. No, mm -hmm. no, he's a dirt ball and he's sinning. Mm -hmm. I'll tell these ladies, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, pass the mustard to me enough to get a backhand. It doesn't mm -hmm. make any difference. Mm -hmm. So, but that's, that's how they like, and they, they're well-meaning. These are mm -hmm. God, I've met, I've sit down with pastors like this. They're well-meaning, godly men. They don't get it. Mm -hmm. But when you read that job of the husband, according to God, his yeah. word, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Right. That is, it's, you could only do that with Christ. You exactly couldn't do right. it by yourself. No. See, that's the standard. These guys I'm talking about are so far below that, it's mm -hmm. not even funny. You know, God is not mocked. There are going to be consequences. He really doesn't like that kind of a guy. Um, in fact, it says in Malachi 2.16, I hate divorce, but I also hate a man who, who will treat his wife in this way, mm -hmm. in a treacherous way. That's what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, so that's serious sin, mm -hmm. to, to treat your wife like that. Yeah, that's oh. a big word, that treacherous. That's, that's, Did that's you like in that? the Scripture. It is. It's, it's a, in the Scripture. It is, yeah. and that's what these guys are doing. In Malachi, if you want to look it up. I saw a lady just today. Who, her husband's out of town uh, traveling now, but she, he's, she's lived with him. He's, it's only been a year abusing her, t treating her terribly. They have a small child. I said to her, get out. Her parents were supporting her. Your husband's not going to know anything. We're going we're gonna to get you out. She's gonna, and she's going to, it'll take her a little while. Doesn't have a job. She, in fact, he, she left her college to, to support this guy. Mm. And, and, and instead of being, I said, he's supposed to care for you and protect you and, and lead you. And, and guide you spiritually, and he's doing everything the opposite of that. You know. Yeah, when you were here last month, we talked about why aren't there any clues in the courtship, and you said, these guys are good. They are good. They're incredibly good. In my office, I think I mentioned before, they'll break down and cry. They put on an Oscar-worthy performance. Here is the statuette. Magnificent. However, I don't believe you because I believe your wife. She's here too. But they'll fool everybody else. They'll fool the pastor. They'll fool mm -hmm. your friend. They'll fool mm -hmm. your family. Mm -hmm. That's how good they are. It's mm -hmm. incredible. You know, I just talked to my uh, director before we started, Gary Bell. He heard us talking about this. And he told me about a young lady who wanted to go to the mission field. That was, she went to Bible college. This dude marries her, got her off track probably from the yeah, right. will of the Lord. And married her. He was abusive and and ended up with six children. Oh my goodness. Six children before her, her fa I believe her father, who was a policeman said, you're leaving, you gotta get out, you know. Um, and I thought it's interesting that just him overhearing yeah. this, it's like, oh yeah, that happens. That really yeah. happens. See, everybody knows somebody. If this book isn't for you specifically, you know somebody who needs it. Mm -hmm. Could be a parent, could be a grandparent, could be, you know, of, of a person, you know, uh, I spoke at a church in Brandon uh, this last week, a Rise Church, a wonderful church, 
and uh, had person after person coming up and going, my neighbor, my friend, my coworker, mm -hmm. my daughter, my mm -hmm. niece. I said, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Buy the book. Get it to them. Let's see if we can get them away. Mm -hmm. uh, Boy, it is it is so important, and, and th that kind of surprised me. Just you know, just overhearing yeah. us talk about it, somebody yeah. knew somebody. But think of the tragedy of this young lady being called to the mission field. I know, and Man. that was over. That I know. I tell those ladies, you know what? God is a God of restoration. If you take the right moves and get away, God will redeem those years. Yes. Joel says mm -hmm. he will redeem what the locusts have eaten. Mm -hmm. He'll give it back to you. The, the mission field could still be in her future. Yes. But never with that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, get get out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? But wasting years like that's rough. Yeah. Uh, I. Um, boy, when it comes to marriage, you better soak it in prayer. Yeah, boy. So soak it, soak it, and, and ask the Lord to open your eyes beyond the. You know the dubs and the True. wedding cake. Now and all. sometimes you've seen this too, Arthurlean. There are there are red flags that come up during mm -hmm. the courtship, and the lady just blows right by them. <laughs> you are so <laughs> right. I mean, really? Er, you see something that really shouldn't happen. You're talking about the guy's talking about your mother in a very nasty, you know, condescending way. A good guy would never do that. You'd never think of it. Or other little things, you know, control mm -hmm. and always going to where he wants to eat. I mean, come on. But they they're in love, and so they miss it. Yes, and I think women are more gullible than men I when it comes to that. Right. Uh, yeah. So you might listen to some of your friends because your friends are not in love with him. Right, and, and your family mm -hmm. could go a long way. The little things they notice. Well, speak right. Up. Listen, that's that's why courtship needs to be longer than just a couple of months. These guys can move like a freight train. I mean, they can fake it for a year, but you check them out thoroughly. Make mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Find out about previous relationships and the person's family and and, and see him in all kinds of situations. You're going to see your guy angry at least six, seven, eight times. And how does he handle that mm -hmm. before you ever think of marrying him? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you just join me, uh, Dr. Clark is on with us every month. Uh, last month, we kind of debuted this book, Enough is Enough. And of course, we didn't get finished talking about it. So we're talking about it today. The website's on the screen. You can get this and a lot of other information about his, uh, I would call it a ministry, your practice and all. Yeah. And uh, you do counseling by phone and other, other methods, right? I do. People from around the country call in. I do marriage intensives. Couples will fly in to get help. I'm seeing more and more ladies that are with abusers who are coming in and part we do a couple of days together to get them ready to follow the program. Yeah, phone advice, email advice. Of course, I see people locally, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, also, I would love to attend one of his, it's kind of a mini conference on weekends in some yeah. churches. Yeah. Uh, he can be invited by the pastor or whatever, but I don't know of anything more important at all in a church than to have a marriage conference. You really do need it. Uh, couples will come, you'll never know what's behind the veil in their little lives, but they can really be helped. So um, if any pastors are out there, I think it'd be a great, great investment uh, and besides, they're, they're, you're, they're you're rather entertaining. <laughs> I, I think I am. I'm a high energy guy. We have a lot of fun. There's a lot of humor. I speak the truth, but it's it can be a galvanizing event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. more churches are using screens, and that's okay. But to have the real thing, mm -hmm. I think it's better. Mm -hmm. And those are usually like Friday night and Saturday, or Saturday, or yeah, all different formats. And sometimes churches, Sunday morning. Yeah, I'll do the Sunday morning services, and then come back for an afternoon seminar, or it's Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. whatever they want. I'm mm -hmm. flexible. And uh, we're in the Tampa Bay area. Okay. Um, the guy usually abuses on a regular basis. Usually, uh, yeah. A gal thinks maybe, oh, he's gone two weeks and he's been nice, so. Oh, yeah, hope springs eternal in mm -hmm. the heart of the mm -hmm. codependent. Oh, I know it. Mm -hmm. I think he's got it, and he'll tell you he's got it. And these guys are smooth enough. Now, some will never apologize for anything. Others will actually say, yeah, I was wrong. That's right. Don't want to talk about it. That's in the past. Yeah. It was two weeks ago. So not going to talk about it. But I, I'm better now. I think, uh, yeah, I really got it. But no, <laughs> until the next thing happens, it upsets me. He has got nothing. Yeah, like judge not. That, that's the favorite scripture of the reprobate. <laughs> judge not. <laughs> it yeah. is. Yeah. You know what? I'm not going mm. to tell you the truth. God's the one that's going to judge you, buddy. Mm. And that's not going to be pleasant. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you got to make sure. He doesn't, mm -hmm. without, without, intense therapy and group work and, and this whole spiritual program, yeah, he's, he's not going to change. Yeah, because whatever it is, is deeply ingrained. Right. Oh, Correct. yeah, it's who he is. Mm -hmm. And it goes all the way back. The few guys that I've helped through the process that have actually stayed with it, 
the narcissists, yeah, then you go back into their, you know, dad was abusive, uh, mom took it, so he has seen it for years growing up, classic. He was abused himself, he's got, he's angry, he's been angry his whole life, there's a hatred of women almost always, have to control, no idea how to be intimate, lack of self-control, yeah, it's deep within them. So he needs a ton of work. Big time. And sadly, not very many no. go through the process, oh, do they? Oh, no. I have these guys that start fast. The, the first 10 yards of a marathon, he's sprinting, he's flying, he's waving to the crowd, and then boom, he's off the track because they don't have the stamina. And they start to think, you know what, why am I doing all yeah, this Yeah, I don't for? need to do this. It's her fault anyway. Uh -huh. And then boom, they're gone. I'll tell the lady, yeah, well, there you go. That's mm -hmm. your answer, mm -hmm. not going to change. Sorry, but that's kind of the pattern. The, the guys who go through it are the exception, right? Oh, they are. There's a few. We hope you've got one if you're married to one, but eh, we'll find out. Yeah, and I could cry, but we're out of time, but you'll be back next month. Yes. Okay, and we're going to continue with this, this wonderful book. Stay with me. have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. All right. Um let me remind you again of what we're offering you today. It's just a little booklet by Beth Moore. I'm sure that most of our viewers know who she is, has a wonderful, wonderful ministry. I'm sure it's worldwide by now. And just this wonderful message, the promise of security. I have a sense that so many of you viewers need it because uh, there's a lot in this world to kind of beat you down. So information's on your screen and we'll send it to you for any amount. You can call the answering service or you can write to us. And let me again tell you how much we, we do appreciate you. We've been on the air a long time and some of you just, you know, through the mail, I feel like I know you because you write to us every month. And, uh, you know, not only do we notice it and appreciate it, God notices it. God notices everything we do for his kingdom and it's gonna all come together one of these days in heaven. But I hope you'll join me next time Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers. 